On this week's episode of the Movement RVA podcast, we have no topic, no guests, and talk about God knows what. Welcome back. Episode 8 of the podcast. Here we are. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to move this so I can see you, but it's not covering my face. Yeah. When we get real popular because it's I think we are. We are. Just just go, man. We're live. It, what's going to happen is uh I can see the YouTube comments now. Tell that fat guy to stop saying welcome back like that. How are you going to What will your response be? I, the same response I always have nothing nothing what are, what am I worried about I started engaging in YouTube comments I shouldn't hold on to that because we're gonna get to it okay. some business first yes if you like the podcast if you don't like the podcast subscribe to the YouTube channel you'll get weekly training updates recovery techniques this podcast and then when we do cool documentaries you will get those too so all you got to do is click the cityscape if you have a YouTube account and uh, join also we're on iTunes Subscribe to the podcast. You'll get it weekly. It comes out every Friday. I heard we have our first subscriber, and and Terry. She told me she subscribed. Yes, we have five listeners now. Yeah. And finally, we have someone that is not our friend or lava associated with us. So thanks, Terry. We appreciate it. Um, leave a review. She is our friend, though. She's definitely our friend. I always say I don't care if it's positive or negative. Let me let me tell you why I say this because I feel like it's not coming off the right way. I'm not going to control people's responses to this. And I also feel like a lot of constructive criticism could come out that way. So if you have ideas about the show, thoughts, things to make it better, we uh, can, uh, something's crazy going on. Always. Yes. Leave those comments and um, maybe we'll respond to them. Maybe we'll actually take them on board. Maybe not. Probably not. Cause Probably Jake, ignore them. Jake will not do that. Um, so first segment what do you have have your training goals changed my training goals really haven't changed they're still the same um let's talk about how jacked up you are when it comes to training i mean it's still it's uh it's not going awesome i think uh i'm trying to get into just a point of training consistently again after a few months off he has a legit excuse people i mean i think a lot of people have that excuse though i think it's really uh I don't know if it's an excuse as much as just acknowledging circumstance, circumstance or priorities, what place in your life you want training to be. So do you want to tell everyone why this is happening to you? Well, uh, I feel like I've said like every podcast so far that, you know, got a kid. Um, I'm taking care of him quite a bit. Beautiful baby son. Oh yes. Young Lucius. Young Lucius. And, uh, but on top of that, the, uh, the gym, super fit, and this and a lot of other things business wise uh take up my time so you have to acknowledge what your priorities are and what you want to achieve uh you know training can't always be at the top of the pack you can always make it a part of it and um but you know at certain points it's going to be higher up and i know that at that point i'll be able to get back to making progress if i train smart now Um, but right now i mean nutrition and sleep and the amount i'm actually training are sort of uh in the can so uh, I'm doing the best I can with it. I just want to get back to a place where I'm consistent and have uh, maybe at least training five times a week regularly and not feeling sore all the time, beat up. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Jake always says he doesn't know what I'm doing for training because it does change weekly. I get bored. Different program every every week. It's not a different program. I kind of mix everything. I get bored. But what I have started doing is training with Jamie and Jaw, who basically exclusively do crossfit competition program crossfit yep do i gotta be this close to the mic no that's that's in your mind i I can't talk to you all right this is a lot better so they um they're way better than me and um that is the only reason why i'm training with them because i feel like when you train with people that are better than you you have no choice but to get better because it sucks to be embarrassed every day yeah. One thing I'll say, it is nice to get somebody be within sort of a uh, reach of those people. Right. Even if it's just on some things. Like uh, all last year, um, I was training with our competition group and it was good. Uh, you know, 
I mean, the, the guys were beating me routinely. If I won, you know, if I was first on a workout or something, it was a, it was certainly a unique day. An anomaly. An anomaly, yeah. So uh, There's no way Jake could beat anybody. I beat lots of people. <laughs> but, um, no, but really what it is was having those guys close uh, was important. You know, Because you felt like you were chasing. Yeah, but if you're just like, you know, one thing when you're training with the same people all the time, which is a little bit rough, is you sort of establish this pecking order in your head where, right. you know, like, oh, that's that's not a, a weightlifting oriented workout. This dude's definitely going to beat me. Or that's a running workout. That dude's definitely going to beat me. And, um, you know, so at that point, you just sort of take it. You don't maybe don't work as hard. Um, I could see that happening for a lot of people, but I suck now and have to scale a lot of things. But my head, in my head, I've said, when I don't have to scale anymore, like I'm going to chase them everything because, and this is good or bad, I'm super, super competitive. Like I've been able to hang with people in certain situations in my life like I had no business hanging with. Yeah. And so... Uh, it can be a good thing if it's done correctly, if you channel it. Right. So I, I think the takeaway essentially is know yourself. And if you're the kind of person that's like, well, he's better than me in weightlifting, so whatever, then you need to train with people that are basically at the same level as you. But if you're like me, you need to be around people that are extraordinarily better than you so that you actually have a reason. So you have a reason to live. I agree. Are your, uh, is that your goals for this right now? If you establish those? Well, my goal is to be always less fat, but I've talked about that a lot. So my, my actual non-nutrition side of that is hang with Jamie and Jaw as much as possible. Try to keep up. What's, what sort of time frame do you got on that? What? Not being fat? Hanging with those guys. As in how long am I going to train with them? No, I mean like... Is it, are you looking at like, all right, a year from now, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. As good as these next, guys. next open, I'm scaling nothing. All right. That's a good place to be. Right. I mean, that's, that's it. And I know because of the way it's gone next year, there are going to be muscle ups, which is the only thing I could not do this year. Um, and I've had, I've had shoulder issues in the past that make handstand pushups like just horrible. So I'm going to work on that mobility, but yeah. So I'm training with them so that I can do the open next year, not scaled. I don't care if I do well. I just don't want to do it scaled. Well is relative. Let's put that out there. Yeah. As we're getting started, I feel like people should know what's up with this, this huge banner behind us. Oh, yeah. How could we forget? Yeah. Well, first of all, Clay. Hey, Clay, the producer, is working the camera. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, man, making sure everything runs correctly. Um, and one week from now, which will be the day after this podcast comes out, Jake is hosting a gigantic weightlifting open called the RVA Open. You can go to rvaopen.com to uh, get more information. We're going to have a lot of big names. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is the biggest weightlifting meet that I've ever done. Um, been doing them since, I want to say, 2011. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got my first one started. I think I've done at least 10 weightlifting meets or so. Uh, but weightlifting has grown a lot lately. And I think it was appropriate to sort of bump up the effort that we're putting into it. Uh, so we're going to have a big uh, backdrop, which you see behind us right now. We're going to have a platform and stage lights and a lot more seating. Uh, we have a live stream that's uh, going to be professionally run. So, And uh, at the end of each day, we're going to have a lot of really, really good lifters. Uh, some people mostly top sort of five in their weight class lifting. So it's, uh, it's going to be a big one. I want to rant for a minute. And this is what it is simply. A lot of people talk about, especially in the CrossFit world, um, giving weightlifting the prestige it deserves, getting America basically on equal footing with the rest of the world. Jake is actually doing something about it. It's not a ton of money, but he's offering prize money for the people that win the Invitational? Uh, correct. Uh, there's a little bit for the Open as well. Okay. So just not as much. So he's offering everybody money. So if you want to talk about professionalizing weightlifting, things like this are the first step to do it. So all of you uh, coaches and gym owners and gurus out there that talk about making weightlifting more professional and valuing it and whatever it is you uh, say about it, I challenge you to actually put your money where your mouth is and do something about it. Yeah, I think it's going to take, I mean, this is a small part of it, um, but once we get to the point where there's a lot of competitions where you can get money, I mean, some people can start to get a little extra from that. Um, when you have 
sponsors who are more engaged and want to start sponsoring athletes, then I think that's when you're going to have the, the professional weightlifter be uh, a real thing. Uh, like what Muscle Driver is doing, they're the, the title sponsor for the RVA Open. I mean, they have... Uh, athletes who get like a you know like a stipend basically they get money every month and they live down there and train with all the muscle driver folks the coaches uh, all the time so as far as I know they're the only ones doing quite that outside of the Olympic Training Center so that's that's a big step forward too and there's no reason that our enormous community and I'm talking about CrossFit but I'll say competitive exercising at large and um, shouldn't contribute to that especially with our love of the uh, snatch and clean and jerk so Again, everyone should find ways, like Jake has, to essentially say these are professional athletes and they're going to get paid for performance in their profession. Yeah. I mean, in short term, is talk, talk, tying that back into the CrossFit community is now that we have all these CrossFitters who want to improve their Olympic lifts, a lot of sort of mid to high level Olympic weightlifting athletes now have... Uh, an avenue to get some extra income, not a whole lot by doing seminars or teaching classes at, uh, at CrossFit gyms. And I mean, I think initially that's really one of the biggest things is because, you know, they can go and maybe run a few classes a week at their local CrossFit gym or travel and do seminars. And, and that's, that's a start. I mean, they're at least doing weightlifting, even though it's not just training, you know, it's a business, but it's, it's all, you know, I think it's probably better than them having to go do a, uh, you know, work an office job or something and weightlift. Support your local weightlifter. I demand it. We got a new uh, sponsor. Um, South of Belmar, which is run by our good friend Elizabeth Sobka. Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. She as creates as branding and uh, marketing for high-intensity brands, especially CrossFit affiliates. She actually has a new, um, I don't know if I'd call it a program, but definitely a new service that she offers which is badges and badges are customized designs crafted by professional creatives at an affordable price for companies all over the world. So badges are essentially for the new affiliate or the affiliate that um, wants to find marketing and branding at an affordable price. And um, she offers that to you. You can go to South of Belmar. That's B E L M A R dot com for more information and jake's actually used her for branding multiple things for years yeah so i mean first if you look at the banner behind us if you're on youtube uh, like like half the uh logos up here have something you know that she's had some hand in or created entirely Uh, beyond that she's worked with us on uh colonial crossfit which was the second gym i opened the superfit games which is the very large competition series that i'm a part of and uh, some of our other logos, like the Movement Podcast logo, um, the RVA Open logo. She's done all those, done a lot of work with, uh, you know, just our collateral outside of the logos, making sure everything we do looks very professional. So it's been been a huge help in, in getting our social media game going and, again, having, like, a consistent brand image. So I think knowing that she works with CrossFit gyms and, you know, when I'm looking around at a lot of CrossFit gym websites, and their logos and what they're doing, and it's pretty terrible. Um, they just look like butt. It's that's just you, straight butt, Jake. Yeah, you could you could say that. Hey, can you say straight no, butt on your you podcast? Just, I'm I'm probably gonna cut out all of this because you're a terrible person. We're never gonna cut this out. Um, straight butt. I, you sound like you're like eight. That's that's what an eight year old would say. Is this real right now? Yeah. Anyway, back to Libby. If you want good, clean uh, graphics by someone who understands how a CrossFit affiliate works and operates. Jake has had a lot of success. Uh, If you like what you've seen on the movement or any of the other associated brands, I would check her out. I agree, Matt. What do we got next? The provocation segment of the podcast is now over. Yeah, it came in, it came and went. We we hadn't put it in right there. I don't think that was where it was planned. That was not the official provocation segment, but it happened. We got it out of the way. Things you don't like this week, Jake. So let's first talk about the the effect, uh, the response of uh, people are angry. Like. Yeah, people so, are out of their minds with anger about how out of much their minds. we hate things. So at first, I think that overwhelmingly, this podcast and training and our approach and our ideas are very positive. Yeah, let's say that we love training. We love everything we talk about. We love. We're going to talk about some other things today that um, maybe people haven't been exposed to or heard of. 
And let's just say there's a lot of passion about everything that we're doing and we're, behind what we're doing. I feel like so we much. We just want the world to be a better place. There you go. Um, so much <laughs> discussion online has sort of veiled, uh, veiled pessimism and hating. And we're just, we're just coming out with it. Right. And I would say that think of it more as I, we named it things we don't, we hate this week because we thought it was funny, but it's really just critiques, the same critiques that everyone's offering. Yeah, it's just, we're it's, just saying it online. It's giving us an open opportunity to address things and just be clear with why that we're doing it. We're not just talking crap like on the side. We're just saying this is sort of sometimes funny and light, sometimes more in depth things that we, uh, we want to talk about. I like your use of crap so you don't swear. Very professional. I, uh, I'm i always professional. Jake gets mad when I swear. Consummate professional. Consummate, consummate professional. Okay, so uh, here's what I don't like this week, and it fits perfectly. I don't like the word hater. Why not? I think that there are definitely people out there that dislike um, what other people are doing or talk shit about what other people are doing because of some sort of insecurity. But when everyone, and it's exactly what we just said, even... Ha- if someone has a honest and sort of fair critique and they're lumped in that category, I think it dismisses opportunities for improvement uh, for the people that are getting hated on. So we're just, we're saying that uh, when you call someone a hater, you're just, you're writing them off. Exactly. And I would encourage uh, the people getting hated on to really look fairly at what's being said because Look, the mission of this gym in a lot of ways and the way that we train is for improvement. Yeah. Maybe it's mastery, purpose, and authenticity. Maybe so. Which we yanked totally from Daniel Pink except changing one word, but that's we'll get to that later. Um, and if that's your goal in life, to continually improve, then to shut off every critique or something you don't like is the exact opposite of improving. Not being very self-aware. Right. Let's increase some self-awareness around here. And if they're hating just because they're... I don't believe people are just jealous off the bat, but if they're hating because they're jealous, then take the time to really figure out if that's the case and then move on from it. But sometimes they might have a point, even the people that hate you the most. So my thing that I'm not a fan of this. I love this one is arguing on the internet because I don't do it very often. Right. But every once in a while, I just sometimes I don't know if I'm bored or I accidentally step into like a trap, like, Something happens. Someone's laying some punji sticks out for you. Yeah, and I'm getting stabbed. I'm getting infected. Because uh, they, t- <laughs> they took a dump on them like the Viet Yeah, that's, that's what they are. Look it up on Wikipedia. It's a true story, guys. Um, I, I mean, and I only do it like once a year where I really get in an argument. Is it really once a year? It's so, it's so infrequently that I can remember, like some people probably just sit around and argue online all day, and it's all just a blur. Like it means nothing to them. I can remember... Every argument I've ever engaged in online, um, some were some were accidental. Uh, like, is this because you hold on to hate and discontent, or is it because it's that rare? It's just uh, it's just that rare. I don't like to get involved with these things. Um, one time, we were uh, talking about this is in the comments section because back in the day, websites actually people were engaged in the comment section. People actually comment, yeah, yeah. Now it's just on Facebook. But one time. Uh, a group of us were talking about, I guess we t- someone tore their hands and where there was just some uh, casual banter. Like some, tore their hands off? Uh, just, you know, a, a tear. No one tore their hands off. No severed hands? Okay. No, I feel like that would be something we talked about. Um, someone came back, Captain Hook. And w- someone said, and the exact words were like, shut up, you got lady parts. They said lady parts. That's his, it was very PG. And then someone else, he, uh, not even a member. Someone had like dropped in one time, got in and just like said like, basically we we're just, we needed to shut up and we're just, uh, you know, like we were weak. Like we shouldn't be like tearing our hands was nothing. And he talked about his wife tearing during delivery. Oh, what? Yeah, it got weird. It got really weird. And so uh, lady parts actually tore. Yeah. So that's what he was saying. He's like, you want to talk about lady parts? You want to talk about lady parts tearing? And so he, uh, and it got weird. And then we had to actually, like, I think someone apologized to him. Like, man, dude, this is getting weird. We just wanted to talk with our friends. Who is this guy? I don't even remember. No one. It was, there was no one. It was like eight years ago. And what was his point? I don't remember. He just, he just wanted, he said, he was like, your prison yard workouts are nothing. You think you're <laughs> tough. We were just talking to each other. So to bring this back full circle, that guy might actually be a real hater. Yeah. 
Um, another time we linked to a, uh, a paleo dessert website when right. we're, as an example of things not to do. Those are often not delicious. Uh, and also, I mean, like a paleo brownie half the time is like 4,000 calories because it's just uh, ground up almonds and coconut oil. It has to have something in it to make it worth it. Yeah. So it's uh, probably terrible for you when it gets right down to it. Right. Of course. And so we're linking to it and we're like, hey, this isn't something you should do. I think this, this particular site actually had like added sugar in it, which was like. That's not paleo. Really weird. Like, hey, it's just, it's almonds with like uh, just high fructose corn syrup. Just pour it all over it. Right. Um, I'm not understanding. But that. I don't think that we realized at the time that uh, people could see where links were coming in from. Um, what so is that? What do you mean? The webmaster, the owners of that website could see that someone oh, linked got you, got to you. them yeah. and said these things. They followed it back. And so then I go to click on the link um, that we had posted on the website. And they had made like the banner of their website a... Uh, a uh, <laughs> an attack on us. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, if you're coming here from CrossFit RVA, <laughs> you should know there's more than one ways to approach <laughs> nutrition." And like, just they told us we were terrible people. Again, there was this was totally accidental. Why do you think this happens? Like, what is it about the internet that makes this happen? I don't know. People are sensitive. People are way too. I think I mean, it goes I'm back. Sen- I'm sensitive. Very sensitive. But uh, this is a spiral back to hater. Like not everyone is hating on you. Maybe someone has an honest critique. Like paleo brownies are not that good for you. And we were about to do a nutrition challenge. So there was, and I tried to explain to the guy. I was like, listen, I don't. I'm trying to do like sort of reset what people are eating. Reset what they uh, you know think about when they're like think about good food it's like they don't need to be eating basically disguised versions of what like they don't need to be eating paleo pizza and brownies and like uh right it's the mozzarella sticks that are just made out of weird things exactly what would you put in a paleo mozzarella i don't know but i feel like that's a funny one that's a good (laughs) it just congealed uh congealed coconut milk with like uh almond crumbs surrounded almond crumbs around a coconut square yeah would you eat that? No. It sounds so bad when it, we're talking about it no, now. No, not good. Just eat cheese sticks, people. I was, just, I was reminded of all these things because I got a, a former member who had moved was asking about um, CrossFit gyms up in Northern Virginia, and she said she just had some issues. Ooh, this was recent. Yeah, this was like okay. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, some issues finding one. And so I just posted, and this is like someone we know very well. Uh, I just posted, hey, uh, let me know where you exactly you're at. I'll try to help you find a good gym up there because I just I'm familiar with some of the folks up in that area. And uh, I guess someone she knew was started posting all this stuff like, oh, you don't need CrossFit. Like, I'll, I'll teach you how to Olympic lift. And she's like, no, no, I know how to Olympic lift. I, you know, I'm just looking for a CrossFit gym I like the community. She's like, man, they don't know how to teach Olympic lifting. They're just going to get you hurt. And started reciting like all the most used up, dried up uh, CrossFit critiques from like five years ago. So she was a hater. She was a hater. and That's a real hater, people, because well, that doesn't even make sense, the argument. Um, so I just pointed out that I was like, I do own a CrossFit gym. I have a little bit of experience with the Olympic lifts and uh, teaching people, as we can see in this banner right back here. Um just pointed out some facts and then things spiraled downward. So I stayed in for the first, like I made three comments. I wasn't even mad, but I just, I wanted to make sure I was sort of taking care of my member or former member that right. I was like, right. I didn't want her to be subjected to these things. Yeah, you should have slugged it out with her. Um, and, uh, you know, it went, it went downhill fast. I was around for the first, like, again, like less than 10 comments. And then I went back and there was at least 40, maybe 50. And it was just, it gotten very hateful on all sides. It got weird. So I got out. I got out early and it was good. If you want to get into an internet argument with us, please leave a comment on the YouTube version of the Moving RVA podcast and we'll be sure to respond with uh, comments that are just laced with hater invective. Or maybe we just will ignore it. I don't know. Probably just ignore it. These are all options. We don't erase comments though. I shouldn't say that because Jake probably does, but I have a policy of not erasing comments because I just let the record of truth stand. I am like, I'm running this this podcast and our social media like it is uh, fucking communist totalitarian state yeah we are uh, there's no you'll get banned if you say anything I don't like that's right Um, comments will be deleted I will edit history I will make it look like we won every argument that ever happened okay and uh, or not I don't know but I'm saying that is a possibility you guys always see us drinking 
on this podcast. So we thought we would tell you what we're drinking. It's usually coffee, but who knows, in the future it might be some sort of um, beverage that we have made ourselves. Or, yeah. Because um, I want to say that I think my favorite thing in life is probably drinking a good beverage. It's a thing I enjoy more than most things. I believe this segment is going to evol- evolve, especially on the video version, to um, something we've dubbed the slow pour. It could. It's a, there's a plan in place. There is. But today, I am drinking Black Hand iced coffee, I'm, Costa Rica blend. Yeah, where did you, you got it from Black Hand? I did. If you want to get coffee from Black Hand and you don't live in Richmond, Virginia, you can go to www.blackhandcoffee.com. We're shouting out people that don't even support us in any way, but I'll do it because I like them that much. That's a nice thing to do. Yes. And uh, supporting local businesses. Jake, what are you drinking? So I'm drinking uh, some Mama Zeus. Is the the blend? It's from Rostov's. I made it myself. I did a, like I do most mornings a Chemex pour over. <laughs> it's that's it's, just drip coffee for hipsters. People. Listen, you can control the temperature. Doesn't make sense. It's uh, you have complete control, and the Chemex filter is the best there is. So in the future, we are going to evolve this into a segment where Jake shows you actually how to do Chemex, how he does it. Why, why do you feel like this is important to people? Because it's cool. I feel like... Do you guys want to know how to make beer and ciders? I feel like drinks is... Uh, there's, you can like you can enjoy just like, say, a beer. And you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. But there's so much further you can go down that path in terms of appreciating certain things. It goes same goes for coffee. Purpose, mastery, and authenticity. So I just feel like there's a lot to dig into. You can uh, you can perfect things. You can there's always something to improve on, and it tastes really good. So next week um, we'll have another cool drink, and we'll probably show you how to make it. Let's take a break. Do you cry at beautiful things? No. Bush cry? No, never a bush cry. What about the life. birth of your son? Didn't cry. He just almost passed out. I lost some. I lost blood flow to my head for a little while. Doesn't this lack of emotion worry you? I just just comes out in different ways. Um, hate and discontent. It's all false. Jake starts it, but then when I finish it, he's just angry. Like when I say it's just hate and discontent. I am what I am. Everyone knows. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You should probably keep all this. Everyone knows that I um love podcasts. Is that what you love this week? I sound really bored saying that. No, I really like podcasts. Uh, I guess I love podcasts if I was to love one thing. When I got out of the military, I somehow simultaneously discovered podcasts. I had a lot of time on my hands between getting out and starting school. So I would listen to podcasts all the time. I also have three dogs, which require uh, long, tedious walks, and there was nothing better than listening to something. And I tended to gravitate towards... I don't know if you'd say educational, but educational ones. What do you think makes for a good podcast? What did you like about the <laughs> podcast you were listening to? I don't want to say what makes for a good podcast because then you could point out all the things we're not doing on this one. Or what if you just only said things that we do, at, like like we had the, the whole thing figured out? Like uh, propaganda, like how you want it to be. Yes. What makes for a good podcast? Um, I would say the authenticity of the hosts is important because I think that a podcast is less radio and more conversation. So authenticity plus, just repeating myself, um, more conversation than regimented or structured or overproduced um, information. I also think that um, the podcasts that I'm most attracted to have an element of, I wanna call these the values of the gym, but you can totally tell me if it's not true, the purpose, mastery, authenticity thing that we've been throwing out so I tend to gravitate towards podcasts that uh, also value that. I mean, I think those are those words are hard. It's hard to imagine exactly what those words are describing. But I noticed, you know, running the gym, we've always, I think, attracted like a certain kind of people, um, folks that are motivated, um, that ultimately have some measure of self-awareness. I would say that's purpose. And um, a interest in... Uh, Improving themselves. I mean, self improvement just sounds so terrible. Like, it's, why? Why? Let's I tell don't them know. why. I just, I just imagine all the, I mean, the self improvement, self help, help books that have been around for, for so long. It's not that, but you know, 
outside for a lot of people outside of training, um, there's really not a lot for them to be aware about in their daily lives. Like, you know, you wake up, you, you go to work, you come home, you do, you know, you watch some, some biggest loser, um, or maybe uh, you cry while you're watching it or you watch the arrow. That's a good show. I have no idea what they're talking. You about. don't want to know about that. So, um, but you go with training, you are forced to be very aware of like, what, uh, what am I good at? What am I not good at? How can I make those things better? I would call that mastery. So anyways, um, yeah, I feel like that's uh, certainly a representation of the gym and uh, it's it's hard to necessarily find those things outside of this environment or at least it, I think it fosters these uh, these traits. So I would say that um, some of the life experiences I've had have propelled me in the direction of purpose, mastery and authenticity. And I would say training definitely kickstarted that for me when I started training like this when I was younger and podcasts have like taken up the slack of that. So when you say people other than the gym and their regular lives don't really have that opportunity, well, weirdly enough, listening to a lot of podcasts has like made me find things in my regular life where I could implement those principles of being more aware or being more present or being more mindful. And um, I actually heard a podcast by Tim Ferriss, who we got some problems with, which we'll talk about, but um, it's it a, sounds like we're going to have like a, a street fight with them, like in uh, like Anchorman, where all the rivals, <laughs> rival stations attack each other. Can I be the guy with the trident in the net? Not, I mean, it's not that kind of problems. We just have some... some no, we got honest critiques, people. Yes. Um, but I think Tim Ferriss is actually awesome overall. And the it's not the last podcast he had, but um, two podcasts ago, he released a very short one. It's 15 minutes. It's um, a chapter in a book by a guy named Tim Kreider called We Learn Nothing. We should make sure to link to that. We should, and I will because that's my job. Um, and the chapter's called Lazy, A Manifesto. It is indeed. And we listen to it. This is the short of this whole thing. In modern life, being busy, particularly if you are of a certain social class, is a badge of honor. People that have to work three minimum wage jobs to survive and take the bus both ways, or guys that do, guys and girls that do doubles in the ICU, and I'm sort of quoting the book, they don't say they're busy, they say they're tired. But people, and I mean, just to be honest, like most people that go to this gym, their activities are all elective, and it seems as though they're trying to fill every moment of their life so that they don't have to concentrate on themselves or can avoid those questions that inevitably come. And in the end, and this is the summary of the whole chapter, the reason why we do it is because most of the things that we do, that we make our life busy with, they don't actually matter in the end. They don't change the world. They don't improve the world. They don't make your um, immediate environment better than how you found it. Right. I could, when I listened to this, I found some, uh, some, I mean, I've heard things like this before, but some direct correlations to my own life, to training and to business. First, I think it's sort of an embarrassing, uh, luxury to even have this problem where you, uh, you can fill your time up with just whatever crap that you feel like, and that you're not forced to say, do certain things or to work a certain amount. Um, you know, it's just saying, uh, you know, I, I spend so much time at the computer every day and so much of that is just uh, fairly unnecessary things. Right. And that as soon as, you know, as soon as I get done with one thing, I think, oh, I'll finally have some free time. Um, you know, I get done with a contest. I get done with some, some portion of a business venture. I have like a day that I feel like I can sit around. And then after that, I immediately find, uh, you know, it's sort of a level of anxiety that rises until I can find something to fill that empty space. Right. Um, but really it's, uh, again, I think it's sort of a, a strange luxury of the, uh, you know, middle class enough that you can even like, you can decide how you're going to spend your time like that. I want to tell a weird story that I swore I would never talk about these things on the podcast, but I think it really applies. Um, when I was on deployment two years ago, I was working out in the gym, doing the kind of stuff we do at CrossFit RVA. And there was a, uh, we called them workers, but essentially we had locals that would clean things up, take out the trash, haul things. So I'm doing heavy, heavy squats because I was strong back then. And uh, I'm thinking I'm working real hard. 
and I watched this, the tiniest man I've ever seen, probably five feet tall, not more than 100 pounds, literally take five, six, or seven completely full trash bags, put them on his back, and then walk up this hill to where we burn the trash. And I've never been more embarrassed about working out in my life because, like you said, it, it was definitely a luxury of being an American and having money to see this guy who's doing things that, uh, for me, I would complain about all the way, and it's just a part of his life. Yeah. So, um, I guess moving beyond that, it's, uh, I mean, again, I, I thought it was, uh, it was a good podcast. It was uh, touched on some interesting topics. There's some self-reflection there, and I could see how that's affected my own life. But also, I can, um, you know, look back at how I've run business and some smart things I tried to do up front and also some things I've tried to do with my training in terms of uh, not just uh, doing a, you know certain things in my training for the hell of it, not just filling up my training with extra stuff. Yep. Um, so I, I think the big thing was an, the takeaway, and I'm sort of getting off, uh, I'm feeling I'm not being precise here, but uh, his big thing was to be, it sounded, I guess, uh, spend his time wisely and then have as much time to do other things. And so I think that there's some very good points there. Um, first for business and for running a gym, one of the things that got me going, and I think uh, a lot of business owners get away from, especially CrossFit gym owners, is you know you you get started with the gym and you treat it as a uh, your job. Um, you just say like you basically uh, you've bought yourself a really crappy right. job. Tell me what you, that's what you said to me last night. You yeah, said you don't get into business to buy yourself a really crappy job. A, a job without benefits and with long hours and with all these demands. Because it's very easy, especially when you're the business owner, to fill all your time up with these just things um, that all maybe not necessarily have to be done or maybe you're not doing them is uh, in the best way possible. So, you know, one of the things I did up front and, um, you know, this is getting away from it a little bit is... I tried to have systems for everything we did. And this is the 80-20 rule. Um, yeah, which is the big thing there was that I found sort of the most effective way to do things. And I made sure that that was how we did it every single time. Right. And uh, there was never any sort of questions there. So and, if, hold on, I'm sorry. If I wasn't clear what the 80-20 rule is, um, and Jake, tell me if I'm wrong. 20% of, of your efforts get 80% of your results. Right. And I think beyond that is to, to get to the point where you can figure out which 20% is actually doing the good work is you have to have a system because if you're not replicating your efforts, you can't measure those efforts and right. how those are actually having a positive impact. So there was that, and that was a big thing. I read this book, uh, the E-Myth Revisited. Um, it's, uh, it, it really helped me set up the business in a way that it could ultimately for the most part run itself and, uh, make sure anyone who came into the business was uh, very, again, effective with how they apply their time and their effort. And, um, you know, would have other time for other things in life. Um, you know, for me in the business that I could go on other ventures and dig into other businesses. And the and, banner behind us is proof of this. Yeah. And still have, um, still know that the gym is running really, really well. So you try to strip away, um, in your business, the busyness of it. Absolutely. And beyond that, it was, uh, you know, I could even see that bleeding into training as well. Right. And that's something I want to talk about. You guys, if you're listening, if you're stuck with us this far, listen to that Tim Ferriss podcast. It's called Lazy Manifesto. But also, if you have Netflix or know someone that has Netflix, take their password and their login and watch a documentary called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Jiro, J-I-R-O. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but it's about a man who's absolutely 100% dedicated to his craft. And I think stripping out busyness, uh, measuring your results scientifically, whether it's processes in a business or writing down your um, training, allows you to get to the meat of whatever it is that's working for you and for you to constantly uh, mine your craft, for lack of a better word, um, and throw away all the busyness. So there was a, uh, I mean... And we talked about this a little bit. Um, Did that make any sense? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll listen back and see. Clay says it made sense. Okay. We're, we're going with Clay. So let's talk about, tell me about training, like the Bruce Lee principle, uh, use what's useful and discard everything that's not useful. Right. Um, so a few things. It's to figure out which, what things that you're doing are actually having the most impact on your training. Um, 
And we try to do this with the group classes, and this is how we sort of, what we're thinking about when we're doing the group classes is we do, uh, you know, we have a limited amount of time. I mean, really, if you come to our program group classes, it's five hours a week, not a whole lot of training. Right. And we're trying to figure out what things that we can do that have the most positive impact on you. Because once you get past, I think that sort of, uh, you know, that five hour mark, at least in our context, is that you open yourself up to needing to do a lot of other things to get a little bit better. Um, This is sort of a challenge of programming for uh, competitors because at this point, uh, you know, that last 20% is what counts. for them. And again, it's, it's your own priorities. Um, you know, we can easily go from training from five hours a week to 15 hours a week. And you might see a, uh, you know, Hey, a 20%, 10% improvement in your performance. Right. When you've increased your training by more than a hundred percent. Right. And, and so it's part of it, kind of like what I was saying earlier with my own training is you have to be aware of what level of effort you're willing to put in and where it fits into your own life. Um, if you're just, uh, you know, you're training for health, wellness, and, uh, you know, it's just a part of your life. You want to knock it out fast. You want to be uh, efficient with uh, uh, whatever. efficient with your, your use of your time. I, th- I think that cross the group classes are like, uh, I mean, almost unbeatable in terms of you, you do it, you knock it out, you go home. 100%. And you want to, because uh, you want to go play with the dogs or, you know, throw a Frisbee or whatever people do, get on Facebook. Um, they get busy. So when you look up to, um, well, I think they'll, I uh, saying it's, that's not busy, right? Isn't that like looking, uh, at, looking at Facebook's busy? Okay. You're looking at Facebook, but it's getting on. It's saying, uh, you know, you want to enjoy your life, whatever that may be. Right. Um, and, uh, so when we're looking at something like competition training and then suddenly you're up at, uh, this huge portion of your life and it's saying, all right, um, how do you see competition? Is it, uh, or not competition, but training. If competition, I keep saying competition, I should say training. When, uh, if training is something that you truly enjoy and you're focused on the process and uh, you enjoy just moving through training. If you're making training your craft. Yes. And if that's what you're dedicating yourself to, I I think it's okay then to say, all right, I'm going to spend all this time here because that's a, maybe that's a, part of your life that you enjoy the most and that's when you you're not thinking about everything else and then when you're focusing on one thing agreed so it's um, so you're very present and mindful during that time absolutely which which is how you should be during your craft but i think again it just goes back to where do you want that to be in your life um is training something you're getting through to do the rest of your life whatever your life may be or is it your life is it the thing that you want to do and you're trying to get through everything else just to get to train and i'm sure the five people listening to us to this thing right now they fall into one of those two categories all equally valid but um i would say just to bring it i keep saying full circle today and i hate saying that i feel like we're throwing plugs out we shouldn't be. <laughs> um you sort of want to be lazy in your training you find what uh what gives you the juice that's worth the squeeze even if it is your craft right you right. got to narrow it down to those effective things just like in your in your work day which talking about tim ferris four hour work week he talks about this is do those things that give you the most results the 80 20 rule once again which is essentially being lazy in your training because you're not filling it with busyness and i think busyness in this form would be more volume longer duration tons of accessory work right when maybe it's not needed at that point in your training career. right yeah um or maybe it's just like uh you know you're aligned to yourself in terms of understanding what part of training you want to be like what its role in your life should be. Yeah, exactly. Um, If I had to get in some specifics, because I feel like this is still a, it's a podcast of fitness in terms of what are the, what is, what's the uh, things that are getting us the most? Guys, this is a podcast of exploring together um, things that make your life worth living. Training being one of them. So they say. Also making homemade beer and ciders. Uh it's a podcast about nothing. It's like the, it's just become within the last 20 minutes, like the, the Seinfeld of podcasts. The fitness Seinfeld life podcast. I can be George. I think I fit that role. I feel like you almost well. called it a lifestyle podcast. And I, I stopped myself. So disappointed in you. So bring it back to fitness, Jake. Uh, I like looking at the things that we think are probably the most important and the, that you should do for a 
well-rounded training program that's not going to kill all your time. And I'm making this up off the top of my head, but I got... I, I should probably squat a lot. You should squat. Um, whether it's uh, eh, probably once or twice a week, depending on the program and what you're doing and how heavy it is. Probably should be kind of heavy. Um, the Olympic lifts I find are quite important at this time. Um, and even if that's like a, a augmented... Uh, like you know lift i mean if, let's just say it's uh you know even if you're doing hang power snatches or something like that i think it's great um beyond that some basic pressing work and some body weight movements some pulling some pull-ups we give a lot of programming advice i want you to do something right now for me how would you apply this principle to the way you run businesses calling them out why are we why are we moving off i'm in the middle of the tr the programming why are we why are we changing continue it? with the programming let me let me finish up my fucking thought <laughs> um and you'll see those things in the group classes every week and beyond that it's a uh, just conditioning in the crossfit classes i mean i think for a lot of people they could do a metcon five days a week and as long as it incorporates some of those elements and they're going to get really far doing that so um i think as long as you're conditioning often and you're squatting and doing some basic olympic lifts and some body weight movements you're going to be you're going to get really far and uh, I think that is uh, for training the 80-20 principle. So what do you want to talk about now? What's your question? My question After is... After you ruined my thought. I'm sorry. I just... We talk about training a lot. I don't want... This is a training podcast still. Is it? I mean, it's been for the first 10 episodes. We're trying to move, guys. This is episode eight. He doesn't even know what episode we're on. Um, That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say, look, you own a lot of businesses. Um all of them with a modicum of success. Have you found that, have you found that like eschewing everything that's unnecessary has been critical to actually running these things or developing these things or keeping them going? That is a constant challenge. Um, it is extremely easy to get sort of bogged down in the minutia of business. And uh, to, I think as soon as you do that, it's, uh, you're not gonna be able to grow the business appropriately. As soon I mean, as you do what? Um, getting bogged down there. Gotcha. Um, you look at, I mean, they say the, what's it, uh, you want to work on your business, not in your business. I feel like people have heard that quite a bit. And uh, what are we going to need to take another break because we're talking too much? Um, so you, you work on your business instead of in your business, which means that you should be placing yourself, I guess, as soon as you can in the process that you can look at the big picture mm -hmm. and that you can outsource or have other people do other things that you don't have to do. Right. So if you don't have to make your posts to the website, uh, if you're a CrossFit gym, uh, someone else can do that. There's nothing special about what you're doing, most likely. And yeah. so you should have someone do that. So then you can say maybe the first step is uh, looking at the programming for next month a little earlier and spending some more time there or uh, figuring out uh, your process is a little bit better for converting prospects or retaining members or just even taking the time to uh, maybe email someone you haven't seen in a while because you have that relationship with that person and that relationship is irreplaceable. So you do those things, I think, as early as you can in the process. It is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a challenge to find uh, not just the right people, but just set in place those processes and make them well-defined. Um, There's probably a constant refining process on it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think we're very fortunate to have found a lot of really good people. And, uh, you know, so when I was not at the gym much these past few months, um, you know, after the baby was born, I didn't worry about things at all, and that was all right. good. Um, you know, with Superfit, I think we have you know myself, and we have you know uh, Megan, our one full-time employee, and then a lot of folks doing part-time work. Uh, you know, that we all work fairly independently of each other because we have these processes in place. Um, so I think you know that's the first thing is just like I was saying towards the beginning of the podcast is having having those systems sort of written down and established. And the idea essentially is that you can get busyness off your plate so that you can go back to the where you started, which is brainstorming new ways to either uh, grow the business you already have, um, further develop what you've done, and uh, maybe even start a new business. Right. I feel first that uh, the creative process is the most enjoyable part of running a business. That's the only part I'd ever want to do. Um, it's not so much, uh, you know grinding through the minutia, but in terms of creating new things and figuring out how to do it the best way and knowing in the end that, you know, 
whether or not it fails or uh, it succeeds is is ultimately you know you had a, a strong role in making that happen. What do, do you? I'm trying to get a word out. <laughs> What's that? What this? The slowest uh, come back to the mic. The slow pause. No, I think this is all really good stuff, and I think that our five listeners, this might be um, one of the first times they've heard these principles or the first time they know someone that's actually applied these principles. And I, I just, I can't plug that podcast, Tim Ferriss, um, especially the episode uh, Lazy Manifesto, more because I think that if, no matter what you do, if you're a lawyer or a doctor or, I don't know, you're, you're a stay-at-home mom, you can take busyness out of your life and be better at the things you care about by um, essentially just getting lazy. So what we haven't talked about is the problems that you said we have when we get in the street fight with Tim Ferriss. Okay, here they are, and I'm going to run them down real quick. And Jake, how break, much, break into comment anytime. How much time do we got? I feel like this is important. Go on. Um, the idea that you can master things in sort of a... I don't want to say a cheap way, but the four hour chef's a good example. People train for years to be expert chefs. Dedicated their lives to their craft. Right. And which is what we are. They essentially got lazy about it. They didn't care about anything else but that. Um, and he is saying that you can work on it for four hours. And, right. and I'm so, paraphrasing, I know, but. Which is a, an interesting juxtaposition with what we've already been talking about in terms of being effective with how you're applying your time. But. Um, you know, I think for some people, their craft is, uh, again, it's, it's where, do you, where do you want it to be in your life? Is it something you, if it's just something you're trying to get through, and uh, if work is just, uh, again, something you you knock out and then you get to the rest of your life, that's great. You should be effective with your time. I think, though, if you have a trade or a job that you are interested in dedicating your life to and making it the biggest part of your life, then then I think that's fine to spend every hour of every day doing it if that's uh, really what makes you happy and, and you know you get your enjoyment out of that. I think that's a great way to end this. Jake. Right now. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, I just want to put out there that we are looking for a coffee sponsor. So if you <laughs> know coffee people. What would this coffee sponsor- sponsorship entail? Just give us free coffee for a podcast. Maybe we can have like a logo on the cup. That's right. We're going to be a big deal one day. So you're going to want to know us. Um, Jake, do you got anything the to plug? Bold statements. Uh, no, but the day after this airs, it will be the RVA Open. We've already talked about it, but you should come. Check There's, it out on Flow Elite. There are tons of uh, yeah, tons of lifters going to be here. It's going to be lifting all day, Saturday and Sunday. We should have some podcasts from that. Um, We're hoping to. Yeah, we got, uh, I think, with all the top level lifters here and just uh, some good personalities with good backgrounds and some uh some maybe advice and uh thoughts to add i think we'll be good solid people here great you ready to wrap it up jake sign us off all right it's just exercise the seinfeld of podcasts <laughs>